so like everybody seems to like disconnect their antenna during lightning storms but i i feel like that's might be the wrong thing to do and if you're interested in why i i will continue Oh, well, you can. I've got my own thoughts on it, so why don't we just do roundtable about disconnecting antennas? Why, why not? Well, my antennas, uh, the entire thing's at ground potential, right? Both the, you know, the hot side and the cold side, they're both at ground potential. The one leg directly grounded, the other leg grounded through a, a large inductor in the amplifier. So they're both at ground potential. And I leave it, I, like when lightning happens, I never disconnect my antenna because A, I feel like there's nothing you can do about a direct hit. You get a direct hit, you could have it disconnected, connected, this or that. It's going to screw your stuff up bad. So just hope that that doesn't happen. But nearby lightning, if your antenna is sitting there at ground potential, it's going to dissipate any static charge that may be building up due to like nearby lightning. So I feel like it's less likely that it's going to damage any of your equipment if you have it connected and well grounded. So like I just... Everyone I know always disconnects their antenna and floats it during a lightning storm, and I feel like that it could just it could build a crazy charge like that. Um, and I just wanted to see what all y'all's thoughts were, why you disconnect them, and, and like what the hell. But I I do not want to change the topic away. So um, that's my comment. Well, that's on topic. That's not changing it. So I'll tell you what. I do disconnect my antennas when there's lightning. But the thing is, is my antennas are grounded outside of the house. So they're grounded whether they're connected inside or not. The reason why I disconnect the antennas is not... Okay, you, you've got several different things going on here. You've got uh, static buildup, which can happen in the wintertime, just when dry air blows past your antennas. If they're not... If they have no resistance to ground whatsoever, then static, ch uh, static charge can build up and up and up and up on your antenna to, to tens of thousands of volts or more, and this is in the wintertime, this is nothing to do with, with a thunderstorm, and suddenly discharge, and you don't want that. Um, so I am a big believer in having some resistive path at all times between an antenna and ground. And by the way, that doesn't have to be a DC ground. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be zero ohms at DC. You can use a choke. You can use a mega ohm high voltage series of resistors. Just and like this is the winter time. This is just a bleed off static buildup. So then you've got the nearby statics or lightning strikes. Now let's jump to the summer, where a uh, where a, a an electrostatic charge is imposed on the antenna rapidly by a nearby lightning strike. In a case like that, you want to have your antenna disconnected because you do not want to have tens of thousands of volts in Reduced on any electrical conductor that's connected to a transmitter or a, or a receiver, because you figure, like in in the off mode, chances are it's a receiver, the the uh, input circuits that's connected to the antenna, and it only on the transmitter when you're in transmit is the transmitter connected. So chances are those FETs or whatever the low level uh, amplifier RF amp stages in a receiver are going to be connected to that antenna, and you don't want them subjected to, you know, a burst of 10,000 volts. And inductors and stuff like that aren't going to do it because, you know, this is a pulse, so that'll the inductor will look like an open circuit. And then when it comes to a direct hit, you're right. Nothing. Nothing. And I can tell you from that story that 
nothing is going to stop damage from a direct lightning strike. It's not going to happen. But as a broadcast engineer, I can tell you things you can do to reduce it. So if you have an outdoor antenna and then the uh, lead-in comes into your house, if there's any way to have a loop there, um, a lightning does not go through loops well at all. A loop looks like uh, a big resistor to lightning. Lightning needs to find the ground real fast, like literally within a flash. So this is why broadcast uh, towers, you know, they were talking 400, 500, 1,000 feet in height these steel towers, um, if you have, let's say, uh, an FM antenna, an FM broadcast antenna on the top, that coax is going to come down to the bottom and then it's going to go through a loop. It just doesn't come down off the bottom and then go to the transmitter building. And in the same way that the feed line going to the tower for, the, for an AM transmitter, broadcast transmitter, does not just go from a coax right into the, and connect right to the antenna tower. It goes through a loop. And it's called a lightning loop. And actually, the loop does two things. Number one, it prevents water runoff with rain. But the other thing is, is it looks like a super high impedance to a lightning bolt. So, um, yeah, there are things that you can do with your ham radio antenna, but I am a big proponent of disconnecting antennas during lightning storms because you just don't want that kind of electromagnetic pulse uh, induced on an antenna and have that can go to any equipment, receiver, transmitter, or whatever. N1BCG. Well, so you're not floating your antenna at all when you disconnect it. You're just disconnecting your feed line and grounding the antenna anyway. I, that's what I'm talking about. You, you want to have it grounded, not floating, was really my point. But I think a lot of people just unplug their coax and float the thing during a lightning storm. And I was just, like, curious. No, 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 no. Not me anyway. Do I got this? So, so I basically have the same take as both you guys do. I used to be a property insurance adjuster back in the 90s. I had a company I did specialty adjusting as related to electronics losses. And the number one fact is you take a direct hit, nothing's getting spared. The, the differential voltages between the left side of your house and the right side of your house are just too big and things will get damaged, period. End of story. Um, but the antennas were a whole other story and kind of introduce a new factor. So I have a ground loop around the house, uh, which actually we're getting added onto, hopefully in a week or so, by my electrician. Um, and that's like the best you can do to try to keep your house as stable as possible from one side to the other. You know, have minimum pot minimum potential difference. But the fact is, you take a hit to one side of the house, you're gonna you're gonna see a difference one way or another. So as far as the antennas go, that's the outside influence, and I agree with what Clark says about the loops. That makes a huge difference. Um, when I disconnect them, I know I say disconnect, but actually what I'm doing is I'm putting them to ground. Um, and during, actually, I take a lot of risks. Usually even during mild lightning storms, I kind of leave them everything tied in. But I have a lot of neon bulbs everywhere, and you can, it's so funny. When, when things start getting bad, you can hear the neon bulbs as they fire. They kind of snap, and you get a snapping going on. I'm like, all right, it's getting a little intense, and then i got to make a decision you know what I'm going to do. Am I going to ground the antenna or am I, you know, is it moving quick? And that's when I get on the weather channel. But yeah, nothing trumps lightning. I don't care what anybody says, no matter how much protection you put in. I look at these uh, little protectors that everybody buys with those, uh, you know, one-time vacuum, they blow out little elements in there. And I'm like, really? No, 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 no. Keep that outside your house. And if you're going to disconnect, disconnect from the outside and ground everything. Because um, same situation, like up here, up in the Poconos, uh, a lot of house fires are started by lightning. And it usually starts a half an hour after the lightning hit. The fire will pick up in the wall and just go to town. So you don't want to bring any of that heat into your house if you can help it. And so, yeah, so I, I kind of, I disconnect just for safety. Oh, I should say I ground, sorry. Um, but I just think it's a good safety measure. And usually within a half an hour, the storm's gone and I just go right back online. So not a big deal. K3FEF. 
Yep. Yeah. Well, kind of making me think, you know, I, I should add some kind of switch that uh, introduces a heavy-ass ground, like a really good low impedance ground to my antenna when I'm not using it, but like I said, it, it's always grounded, like my the entirety of my antenna right now as I'm talking is at ground potential, and I, so I just let, I leave it, I don't change anything when there's lightning storms. But I guess that's what I could do over here, is I could have a very, like, a big, a nice bus, basically, over there by the antenna um, before it comes down into the attic and, and have some kind of switching there to just switch it over to, like, a really heavy ground and not rely on, you know, the, the grounding that I have all the time. I don't know. It, it's interesting. I've also heard that adding sharp points to the antenna, and this has been tested. Um, Dave was telling me about that. VW. He they used to get X number of lightning hits on the transmitter uh, at NBC, and then they added all these goofy-looking, like you know, sharp like knife things to the antenna, and like they barely got any lightning hits after that. So I'll just throw that out there too. But yeah, it's weird. Like I. I hear a lot of people that go into their shack and just disconnect their antenna and float it during a lightning storm. And I, well, that, that just confirms that is the wrong thing to do. The, um, the thing with the sharp points is a product called a static cat. You can look it up, um, and as most often used, broadcasters with tall towers will will buy these things called static cats, just like Boo Boo, um, and they're just that. They're uh, they're usually like a a steel ball with with a lot of metal points on it, and uh, it's mounted at the top of the tower. And what it's designed to do is act as uh, multiple corona points for discharging static buildup between the uh, the atmosphere, you know, like clouds blowing by the top of the tower and the ground. And apparently they work. Well, that's what the brochure says. Wait, I can tell you this one. Do I got it? All right. So I learned this one in physics. I was a physics major in college. And I learned something that, you know, I, I had all this very fundamental basic knowledge, actually, before I went to school, before I went to college. And when I started to go through the physics mathematics program, I learned all these weird things that explained a lot of the stupid things I knew about. Like, for example, car antennas. You ever notice, like, vintage car antennas all have a little bowl at the tip? In fact, a lot of uh, radios have bowls at the tip of the antenna. And that's for coronal discharge. Um, so the radius, think about this, actually. I'll, I'm going to try to, without the math, I'm going to try to put it in very simple terms. Picture a pinhead and the radius that a pinhead makes. If you were to somehow induce a very high voltage in that pinhead, the potential difference between the, let's say, the tip of the pinhead, in other words, the furthest most tangent of the tip head, and the tangent that is, let's say, parallel to the length of the pin, the potential difference is tremendous. A, as a result of that, the pinhead will bleed that off as a coronal discharge. However, if you put something just slightly larger on it with a bigger radius, the potential difference becomes less and you don't get the coronal discharge. Kind of weird stuff. So, if you're talking about spikes, spikes, it would be, uh, all right, here's a better example. Wait, I'm not going to get into the spike thing yet. Think about a, uh, oh, what do they call it? Van de Graaff generator, Tesla coil, anything like that. That is why they put the large radius domes up at the top, because it can hold on to the higher voltages quicker. If you put a thumbtack on top of a Tesla coil, all the voltage, all the potential is going to blast off of that thumbtack. And that's about the simplest way I could put it. And there was something else I wanted to add to that, but I don't remember what it was, so I'm just going to shut up. K3FEF. I can tell you all about Van de Graaff generators. 
Well, just real quick, the, I guess that's why the, the sharp points on the antenna work, because if, if it's developing a, a static charge, it's going to blast it off uh, through those points. So, hmm, that's actually a pretty good explanation, I think. All right, I'm not disconnecting my stuff anymore.